Guru was talking about dignity of labor, dignity of the human being, so that our people don't live like animals. What pride is there in being a president or a leader in a country where people live like dogs? So you give dignity to the human being. Doctors have been on strike, singing, dancing in the streets. The people we carried shoulder high because they scored 420 marks in class 8. Then we carried them shoulder high with song and dance and twigs because they had A, 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 and then they went to do medicine for six years. We now pay them far below what we pay an MCA. An MCA earns three, four times more than you pay that doctor. We are sick nation. Before you do away with allowances, do away with SRC. <laughs> You can't say that. Um, they, what are they you are doing? dismissing everything. What are they doing? ESCC. What are they doing? Those SRC. These kind of formations are for lazy people. Either they are too lazy to think, which is true of us as a country, or it's a smoke screen to send us into sleep as bad things happen. Just in time for Business Glide, your only point of call on matters, public policy, analysis, business, and economics at large, hosted by yours truly, son of the soil, Richard Mwanjo. Indeed, it is always a distinct honor to have you on board. And now to help me dissect the day's conversation is none other than Kenya's most sought-after political analyst and public policy analysis, the first of his name, Haman Bon Manura. How are you, sir? Fine. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, get straight to the day's conversation. And we are talking matters to do with the president promising better tidings for the nation, especially in the forthcoming financial year. And he says the 2024-2025 budget will be prudent and uncountable, which begs the question from my side, are we finally seeing the president capture the imaginations of the nation? I hope so. And we pray so. <laughs> Evidence again on the ground doesn't seem to indicate that's the case. What I've seen the figures they are throwing around. <laughs> Four point something trillion, mm -hmm. when they could hardly finance the three point three trillion budget. There could be more doom on the way. Of course. Then let me ask you this: This far, oftentimes the government has said the major hindrance to Kenya's development is the balloon in recurrent expenditure. Yes. And this far, SRC has actually flouted that as also a reason, saying it's because of irregular hiring in our, in our devolved units of government, yes. in our national government. So let me ask you: This problem to do with ghost workers, irregular hiring. How better can we turn, that, uh, turn around that situation? It must be, it must be structural. Mm -hmm. But it must be born out of honesty and thick, quick thinking mm -hmm. and serious thinking. Can you probably uh, tap into the advice of our lenders, IMF, World Bank? Can we go by their sanctions no. maybe to revitalize yeah, our never, economy? I've yeah, never said anything good. Nothing, nothing from IMF works. Look at the post-COVID. Nothing COVID. good ever comes from World Bank. Nothing. Post-COVID recovery measures that they no, shared with us? forget about them. In fact, if you look at the philosophy behind the formation of IMF and World Bank, it's not for Africa. What we call World Bank is actually Bank of the, uh, Reconstruction and Development. Reconstruction for Europe after the First World, Second World War, to reconstruct Europe. And development for Africa that comes with conditionalities. The sort of, the sort of development that can only sustain the reconstruction and the reconstructed Europe. You get it? So you reconstruct Europe. You look for resources to reconstruct after the war, the destruction. But you take development to Africa with all the conditionalities. Mm -hmm. And you manage the development in such a way there will never be any development. Because Europe, the success of Europe is the failure of Africa. If Africa were to succeed, then Europe will fail. So Europe can only sustain itself by a suppressed Africa and other third world countries. But then we are yet to build some sense of self-reliance. What could be the long-hanging fruit that we can tap into so that we don't depend on IMF or World Bank or whatever lenders? You just look at your own internal resources. That's all. We actually uh, came for the devolved units of government to open up local economies and also ramp up our revenue from the economies that will have been opened up. But this far, the Auditor General's Office is a control of budget. They have 
come forth and put some uh, disappointing remarks whereby a county government spends less than 10% of its budget on development, spending more on recurrent. So would you say then that devolved units are the biggest enemy when it comes to development of the country? You know, we were not the first people to set up, set up develop, devolved governments, mm -hmm. to come up with some form of federal arrangement, mm -hmm. semi-autonomy, as autonomous region. We were not the first. So we would have benefited from hindsight. We would have benefited from what happened in Nigeria when they started being regional, mm -hmm. Majimbo. We would have even looked at how it worked in Kenya immediately after independence before we scrapped it. So we had everything going for us, but we never used it. The structures are weak, the laws, supporting laws are weak, mm -hmm. governors are rogue. So are you saying we rushed into devolving no. the government? There was a lot of time, but there was no thinking. Typical of Kenyans, no thinking in anything. Even the constitution making process was devoid of any thinking. There was no thinking. They were just copy pasting things. But the new crop of leaders who are just, well, most of them, two, slightly one and a half years into office, new governors on board, do they sort of uh, put some sense of confidence in you that they, no. they're going to turn they around? They can't. Their How can they? The process of selection is as good as the product and the process thereafter. We have a poor process of selecting our leaders. And there are no, no, no structures. There are no regulations. There's no thinking. What does every governor do? He or employs because you want to endear yourself to the people by rewarding your people, by ensuring you'll be re-elected. What do you do? The easiest, the lowest hanging fruit is employment. So you end up over-employing. Secondly, you end up giving contracts to cronies so that part of the money they give you to strengthen your war chest for the next election. Mm -hmm. So unless you approach those kind of things, and I've said it's a very simple thing. We must think, number one, we must be serious and honest with ourselves. If we have the clear choice, and I've said so, so many times, if we are happy remaining a poor, dirty third world country, let's go on like that. But if we want to move away from this, where over 80% of the citizens live an animal's life, a dog's life, I cannot be a leader in a country where people live in those conditions like in Kibran Kangwari. I will not sleep in state house. I will not sleep. Sleep will not come. I have to embark immediately on a program to transform the lives of Kenyans so that they live like human beings in the 21st century. So we have the clear choice. So when it comes to our, our employment, is it a very difficult thing to say no governor will employ anybody? Then who does we the just create? We just create what I've said. A national employment bureau a centralized one national employment bureau it does not mean it will be operate from nairobi so that it has a data bank of all kenyans mm -hmm. when you arrive for the job market your name goes there we know you <clears throat> richard Mwenja, bachelor of economics and statistics we have everything and you keep updating your CV there. Now we, we have, if it's a county government, they want to employ a driver. Mm -hmm. Do they have that establishment for a driver? We say yes. You qualify for a driver, big account. How many drivers? One. Okay? What kind of driver do you want? Why do you want the driver? We want him to be driving an ambulance. And therefore he must not just be a driver. He must have these qualifications, okay? Yes. We go to our data bank and give you. Meritocracy takes the front row yeah. seat? No Kenyan will ever look for a job through someone. Mm. First of all, you will have solved so many problems. Social equity. Because you don't, you don't need to know anybody to get a job. Secondly, nobody will overemploy because they don't have the power to employ. The criteria, the criteria for, 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 for promotion is there. For transfer, everything. Discipline. The criteria is there. It is it's just self-generated. You don't even need to talk to anybody. You, at the press of a button, Kakamega County gets 10 nurses. Instead of them going to Saudi Arabia? No. They just get that. 10 nurses because the, the, the space is there. It is clear. You go in the system and you see seven nurses retired, two died, one went to America. Ten vacancies are there. This caliber of nurse you go to the system, button, tan, 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 tan. 
Kakameka, you got 10 nurses. Don't need to, t- t- you don't need to talk to anybody. Therefore, there will be no over-establishment. Uh-huh. Even projects, the governor all of a sudden has become an engineer to know which road to be done and how much and how it should be done. What training did he have in, a, in road construction? Is he an engineer? Are they fist Are MCS engineers? Generally, they are not. Of course, you can be there as an engineer, but are a MCS engineer, is that one of the qualifications? Is it, so, we must have an arrangement where the MP, the MPs in a county participate in the project identification with the people of the constituency and finally with the people of the county. And then the governor is given resources to implement those projects. But line ministries are the ones doing the actual implementation. So the government, the governor ensures that the road is being done the way people wanted it to be done. It is a road. So engineers are not playing games. The MP and the MCA make sure what the people ask is what is being done. But the governor cannot be the one to determine which road, how much it will cost, with small, small scribbling of the county engineer. No! Line ministries must supervise. And to turn down on such impunity and graft in our devolved units of mm-hmm. government, the government has tried to empower graft fighting agencies through capitation and other measures, say talk of ESCC, DCA, you name it. But do you, see, do you think there's a missing link and that has to do with enough political goodwill to support the fight against graft? You cannot fight corruption without political goodwill. Pol- fight, corruption can be fought only by one office and one man, the president. Nobody else. If I become president tomorrow, today, Sasit and Mekula Oath, the first thing I'll have with a press conference with media houses at nine tomorrow. And I'll tell Kenyan corruption in Meisha Leo. Kuiba shilingi ya Kenya, kana ile uliba, hiyo tutafikiria baada, lakini ile unaiba kwanzia leo. At the end of this press conference, touch one shilling yeah, belonging to Kenyans. Not even ESCC director. Bishop I will dismantle mm. that. I don't need it. ESCC, I will remove it. I'll go to the people of Kenya in a referendum. They will remove that ESCC. Because you put it there to show you are doing when you are not doing. It's more, you know. People who fight corruption don't have ESCC. Don't have, they just have officers. These are thieves. Why do you need this ESCC for thieves? People who steal money. You just send a policeman to arrest them. And prosecute them and arrest them and they are committee on Akula Maharage. You can do that? I will do it. In, in under five in years. In six months, there will be no, there will be no, if I'm the president, six months, Akuna Wizi, Atamoy. You can't touch Kenyan money when I'm the president. You will not. Will you seal the loopholes? Some Even s- now, if the government gives me 30 days, mm-hmm. I go to Mombasa, I, I will seal all the loopholes. Substandard fertilizer and everything. Nothing. It will be a thing of the past. I've told you when procurement. There will be no procurement. I'll abolish that department. There is no department called procurement. Government procurement? No. And there will not nothing. If you are an officer, we know what you need. It has been approved. You buy a TV in your office. You just go and buy a TV. If you say you are a director of agriculture and the agriculture <coughs> has the approval to buy nine vehicles. Which kind of vehicle? This type of vehicle? You just go to Toyota Kenya and buy. You don't need procurement. Just go and buy. But Toyota Kenya will also know. We know when they brought 20 units, we are taking 10 out of the 20. We know how much they sold those other 10 for. So they can't lie us. They are paying us taxes when they brought in those Toyotas. All right? So we know how much they are costing. So they can't lie to government and in the system. So if you go to a dealer, he sells the government a Toyota Land Cruiser at 20 million when he has been selling the same same vehicle at 10 million to the public we blacklist him he will never do business with government and they will not like that they will, so, so it is a, you don't need procurement for anything procurement is a way of promoting theft then again now to leave room for enough funds for development expenditure do you subscribe to the argument that we need to support SRC in its cast to make sure they do away with some allowances for public servants most of which are facilitative allowances and so forth. Before you do away with allowances, do away with SRC. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. They, what are they you doing? are dismissing everything. What are they doing? ESCC. What are they doing? Those SRC. 
These kind of formations are for lazy people. Either they are too lazy to think, which is true of us as a country, or it's a smoke screen to send us into sleep as bad things happen. SRC go, we know what we need. We know, <laughs> my friend, <laughs> we know uh -huh. we need to give Kenyans living salaries, living wages. We know what the minimum salary can be. For an average person <laughs> to live, we know. We don't need SRC. You have a rough figure? Maybe we have a rough figure. Which is? Which is like in the region of about 50, 45, between, at the very least, in Nairobi, 40,000 should be average salary of the lowest paid Kenya. Can we afford it? Why not? There's money to steal. And there's no thinking to generate revenue. We need to think to generate revenue. Today we are generating 2 trillion in a country that should be generating 10 trillion. So what are you talking about? They're thinking, how can we move revenue collection? How can we generate, not even collect, generate? I prefer to use the word generate than collect. Mm -hmm. From 2 trillion that we hardly make to 10 trillion, 12 trillion. Without donor reliance? Yeah, we don't, I never deal with donors if I'm the president. Then we pay the least paid person 40, 45, 50,000 shillings in Nairobi. And there is benefit to that. First, there's dignity. Guru was talking about dignity of labor, dignity of the human being, so that our people don't live like animals. What pride is there in being a president or a leader in a country where people live like dogs? So you give dignity to the human being. Secondly, if you pay people well, then they have incomes that they can use to, to spend. When people spend, part of that money comes back to government as tax. And the business in the country thrives. So here you have stupid Kenyans putting up all these buildings and malls. There is nobody to go and shop there. Because Kenyans don't have disposable income. And when people have disposable income, they spend, they also save. And as an economist, you know that circle of Invest, saving investment. Saving investment. Uh -huh. ka, 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 and the country grows, grows, grows. <laughs> so is, 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 this, is this real? Does it require... Somebody be a genius to see that. Or to tame people's allowances. So people must be, mm -hmm. no SRC off, allowances, forget about them, just pay people well. A country that pays a trained teacher something like 20,000 Kenya shillings, the miserable Kenya shillings, 20,000. That country is a sick country. Kenya is a sick country. We are sick. How can you pay a teacher? And even where we, ma we have some little money, we distort it. We pay a MMC more than a professor. Doctors have been on strike, singing, dancing in the streets. The people we carried shoulder high because they scored 420 marks in class 8. Then we carried them shoulder high with song and dance and twigs because they had A, 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 and then they went to do medicine for six years. We now pay them. Far below what we pay an MCA. An MCA and three, four times more than you pay that doctor. We are a sick nation. We are not normal people. We are just sick. You get what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. Even at a time when CS Nakumicha says they are interns who are willing to do that work for free. Don't talk of the word CS and put Nakumicha there. They, the two can mix. <laughs> who is she then? She's not a CS. Management by intimidation, you no, say? that's... You see, this country has to be serious. <laughs> we have the clear choice. And I've said it. We have the clear choice. To be a laughing stock of the, the world, to let our people live like dogs in conditions that people even didn't live in in the 17th century, 18th century. Our people are living in those conditions. Children going with jiggers in the legs <clears throat> in the 21st century. Jiggers in the toes. We have that choice. But we have the choice to look for serious Kenyans to run ministries and not give them to clowns. Are you signaling that when it comes to president's appointments, uh, in, in the case of meritocracy, C.S. Nahumicha sort of is the butt of all jokes? She's a joke. She can, she's a good person. She's even beautiful. She's a lawyer <laughs> like me. But a minister she cannot be. Not in a serious place where people are serious, where people know uh -huh. there's a really threat that the society can collapse. 
that cancer is a killer. We need people heading the ministry to think about preventive and community health, to think about the foods Kenyans use, to think up things along FDA in America. What enters this country as food and medicine? What are Kenyans eating on a daily basis? What are the inter interventions necessary to prevent cancer that is ravaging the whole country? Nakomija is not capable of that kind of thinking. She's a good person. But for heaven's sake, why are you being unfair to her? You can't be so unfair to other people. You are being unfair to her. Why are you giving her a job she can do? Give there are jobs she can do. Give her. You could do better yourself. Not me. Me, I'm beyond that. Me, I, the only thing I can do is to be like president of this country. <laughs> Not small jobs like those. There are people like you who can do those small jobs of minister. <laughs> or Bruno Teatro. Yeah, yeah, such. Not me. <laughs> me, I am beyond that. You're very well. I'm saying they are Kenyans. I get it. Who can do those jobs? Mm -hmm. And those who we are saying <clears throat> can't do, we are not saying they are bad Kenyans. We are not even saying they are not qualified. But there are other jobs they can do. I don't know whether you get what I'm saying. True. There are jobs people like Nakomicha can do. True. And many people in the cabinet are good people. Some of them are my friends. <laughs> there are many good things they can do. Some of them can just be promoted, <laughs> supported, do business. But not be ministers. <laughs> you get it? I get it. Eh? I get Some it. of them can work in Bombers of Kenya. <laughs> to organize entertainment for... <laughs> <laughs> but not to be a cabinet secretary. A cabinet secretary is a custodian of big things, yes. a thinker, mm -hmm. a generator of policy, <clears throat> a person who helps the president realize his dream. It can't just be anybody you pick from the streets. Deep thinking like that of your friend Kipruto Arab Kiro yeah. when he was then Minister for Agriculture? Yeah, Kipruto is a serious Kenyan. Deep thinker. Yeah, people who can think like those ones. There you have your time now for a fan of the week. It is none other than Kevin Kinudia in Germany. Kevin Kinudia in Germany. Mm -hmm. U Germany. Yeah, sure. Asante sana, Kevin. Asante sana. Ana kukaribisha kwake, uh, Amagoropak in Transoya. Oh, that's nice, wonderful place. Yeah. Oh, good. I wish I could afford it. It's a nice place. For big boys. I was only. foolish enough to go there and ask the cost. I say, oh, God. No wonder I was told here, Raila, here, Flan, here. I say, okay, fine. <laughs> but at least he's gracious enough. eating fruits of independence. <laughs> At only 33 years, you can imagine. Oh, wonderful. Is that Amagoro Park? Yeah, sure. Oh, wonderful. It's a good, by the way, it's a wonderful place. Uh -huh. Amagoro Park is a wonderful place. You just look at there. I went there, mm -hmm. walked, then I went to the people in charge. I asked them, they told me, okay, ah, Manyora, yeah, you, you should be here. Your <laughs> friends are here. In your flani, in your flani. You should be here. Then I was told the price, the cost. I said, God. <laughs> I just walked. I just, I just walked out <laughs> silently. I, said, I told them I'm in the wrong place, and in the wrong profession, maybe. Yeah, no, no, professions are never wrong. Okay, it's not always about money. Uh -huh. No, there's money a bigger is, calling. There are bigger things. Uh -huh. We, we, we've, con we've made our contribution in this world. Mm -hmm. You consider history uh, that it will have a place for you? Of course, we've shaped, we've shaped <coughs> public opinion. Mm -hmm. We, uh, as a teacher, have taught people right from. I was an adult education teacher, Mwalimu Agumbaro. I was a secondary school teacher, UT, trained teacher. I've taught at university for many years. Surely I must have made my contribution. I'm in public space now, as you and I are contributing. We made our contribution. We don't really need to have money. We need a bit of it. And that's why we're asking our viewers to support us. Yeah, sure. Just to run this show, True. not to be rich. I don't even want to be rich, mm -hmm. no. Very well, there you have it. We never take your support for granted and we invite you to partner with us in ways you can. Until next time on Business Glide, it's always a distinct honor to have you on board. Do enjoy the rest of your day.